Two of Michigan's top Republican lawmakers visiting the White House today. Find out why and what criticisms they face from their peers. Plus, coronavirus cases surging across the United States and in Michigan. Here, Governor Whitmer's call to Congress and doctors call to action. And get in the holiday spirit with some festive and tasty treats. We're talking Christmas cookies, my favorite. TV5 News at 9 starts right now. Live and local with coverage you can count on. This is WNEN TV5 News at 9. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. We made it another week and we are just so close to the weekend now. Yesterday we had beautiful weather. Let's hope that trend continues. We are starting out with a live look over mid Michigan today. You can see Saginaw right there. Road conditions looking good and the sun coming in nicely as well. Thanks for watching TV5 News at 9. I'm Blake Keller. We're glad that you can join us. Meteorologist Chris Eastlick is in the First Warn 5 Weather Center. And uh, how long are we holding off on that S word, Chris? One more day. Well, <laughs> the S word, two more days. The warmth okay. is one more day. It looks like we'll cool down tomorrow. I think on Sunday we'll have a chance for some rain and snow showers. May not be for everybody, but the chance is there nonetheless. We've got temperatures that are pretty enjoyable right now, considering it's only 9 o'clock in the morning in November. Upper 40s and mid 50s across much of mid Michigan, and we've got 58 in Flint leading the way there. These temperatures outpacing yesterday's values at this time by about 5 to 15 degrees. So certainly headed in the right direction this afternoon if you like the warmth. We've got winds that are coming out of the southwest about 5 to 15. I think those pick up again today to around 10 to 20. And despite what your radar is showing you, it does have a few areas of green, but that moisture being detected way high up in the atmosphere. So we are not expecting any of that to actually reach the ground today. There may be a few extra clouds that pass through ahead of a cold front, but none of those clouds expected to produce any rain. Hour by hour, looks like the next 12 pretty smooth. Temperatures very similar to yesterday. Could be a few cooler spots, especially in the west where the cold front passes by first, but otherwise a really nice day. We'll take a look at what's ahead for the weekend forecast. It might look better on Sunday. That's coming up. Chris, thank you. All eyes are on the nation's capital today to see what emerges from the upcoming meeting between Michigan's top Republican legislative leaders and President Donald Trump. House Speaker Lee Chatfield and Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky are reportedly going to the White House today. Now that news prompting criticism from Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist about containing COVID and certifying the results of the November 3rd election. The election is over. It has been since the voters voted and, and there's nothing else that Republicans uh, can do to stop that. Gilchrist says that all 83 counties in Michigan have certified their results but that certification remains a sticking point to Republicans. They claim irregularities in Wayne County, which helped Joe Biden carry the state. Four members of Wayne County's board agreed to certify those results. That's even though it's two Republicans filed affidavits claiming they were bullied into their votes and now want to rescind them. And Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson's office says there is no legal way for canvassers to rescind their votes. She says their job is done. The next step in the process is for the Board of State canvassers to meet. Now that meeting is set for next week. As President Trump continues his claims challenging the results of the election here in Michigan and other battleground states, Joe Biden is condemning his actions. CBS's Deborah Alfaron is in Washington with the very latest. Did you all watch my cousin Vinny? During an animated press conference at Republican National Committee headquarters yesterday. I know crimes. I can smell them. The Trump campaign again one. failed to present evidence of widespread voter fraud and cast further unsubstantiated allegations. Massive influence of communist money. More than two weeks after Election Day, the campaign is running out of paths to challenge the results. President Trump won by a landslide. Today, Georgia is expected to certify President-elect Biden's victory. All five million ballots were counted by hand during a six-day audit. The point of the audit is to show the machines counted the ballots fairly. Also happening today, President Trump is meeting with two Michigan legislators at the White House. Democrats say he wants them to intervene, though there's little evidence they have any power to do so. Joe Biden won Michigan by over 150,000 votes, 14 times the margin that Donald Trump won by in 2016. The Trump appointee of the General Services Administration has yet to approve the transition process. It's left President-elect Biden looking for other ways to prepare for the White House. 
being one of the most irresponsible presidents in American history. Mr. Biden condemned the president's actions while speaking to reporters yesterday. I'm confident he knows he hasn't won and is not going to be able to win, and we're going to be sworn in on January 20th. The president-elect also spoke with a bipartisan group of governors yesterday on the coronavirus pandemic. Deborah Alferone, CBS News, Washington. In regards to the president's efforts to get election results overturned, late last night, Republican Senator Mitt Romney tweeted, quote, the president has now resorted to overt pressure on state and local officials to subvert the will of the people. He continued tweeting, quote, it is hard to imagine a worse, more undemocratic action by a sitting president. Well, Pfizer seeking emergency use of their coronavirus vaccine today. Starting that process could bring some doses as early as next month, though it won't be ready for widespread use until 2021. Governor Gretchen Whitmer is calling on Congress to pass a new COVID relief package, and she's calling on Lansing Republicans to come up with a plan to contain the spread of COVID in Michigan. I am hopeful that when the legislature returns from their hunting break, Republicans will share their plans for addressing the public health emergency our state is facing. Now, she also called on lawmakers to extend unemployment benefits past the end of December. Meantime, Michigan added nearly 7,600 new cases yesterday, bringing its total to more than 285,000 cases. Now, despite a statewide ban on indoor dining, a restaurant owner in Lapeer says he won't comply. Patrick Hinks, the owner of Woodchips Barbecue, says he's taking a stand for his employees. He's keeping the dining room open at reduced capacity with barriers, masks, and sanitizing stations in place. Sunday, I was bombarded by messages from my team, you know, terrified for themselves and their families. I had to assure them, not knowing what the actual plan was, that I'd find a way to make sure they were taken care of. And I, won't, I won't kick them to the curb. Now, despite the precautions, wood chips could face potential fines or harsher consequences for violating the health department's order. Hink says he followed the previous shutdown order, only doing carry back, uh, carry out back in the spring, but it almost caused his business to fail. Now, Michigan is increasing efforts to enforce its pandemic orders. Michigan OSHA is expanding the ambassador program it began in September. Under it, consultants go to businesses to offer education and support about COVID-19 rules. Consultants just stopping in and taking the time to talk with owners or managers about sort of the high, high level overview of things that they need to have in place. And then they can request a second visit, which is a longer consultation. If a business isn't following COVID-19 orders, the first visit will serve as a warning. But if the owner doesn't make any changes, they could face citations. The agency hopes to reach more than 2,300 businesses by the end of the year. And new this morning, 28,000 pounds of organic roasted soybeans were stolen from a farm in Tuscola County. That's according to the sheriff's office. They say it was taken from grain bins near Lambton and Mushroom Roads between October 25th and November 3rd. The soybeans belonged to another farmer and were being roasted on the farm they were taken from. If you have any information, call the sheriff's office. Well, a stark warning from Dr. Anthony Fauci and the Coronavirus Task Force. Hear their call to action ahead of the holidays. And a former Flint officer charged with sexual...